Could we be starting the bull run? Let's do it. So we're going to start here. Coin market cap. The total market cap of crypto globally is now up 2.60% in the past 24 hours and now stands at $2.63 trillion, if I can get my words out. That's $2.63 trillion with Bitcoin just uh, falling below the $71,000 mark. It was just literally there as I was about to record this video. Now at 70955 up 2.81% in the past 24 hours. What was I saying in a video or two ago that I think a breakout is imminent? And uh, seeing the market today, the total market cap up 2.60%. It is another correct prediction. So look, really excited about everything that we're, you know, I guess proposed to see over the next few months. This is really for me, uh, I guess, the start of things. But there is some risky stuff going on in the crypto space. So I say the crypto space, the financial space. Um, it's important to look outside the crypto market. And I've got some stuff around the Fed pivot and uh, what we should be expecting coming soon. So stay until the very end. Um, but let's start, right, by looking at Thailand, uh, an unusual place to start, I know. But Thailand's SEC approves Bitcoin ETF fund for wealthy investors. And again, you know, we're seeing more and more of these funds starting up. And I think that this is you know, again, just more positivity. And I'll come on to some more positivity out of the US shortly. Um, but yeah, for me, this is really, really telling. Uh, we've got Central Bank of Qatar announces CBDC project. We're going to start to see more of this as we start to, I guess, become more mainstream within the blockchain space and more people start to get into crypto. Part of that is the you know the tradfi the traditional banking sector they're they are going to come on they are going to go onto blockchain rails and they are going to be using uh, something as uh, deadly as uh, CBDCs um, you know and if you don't understand what a CBDC is uh, imagine just you know your money turning into vouchers you know that you know can be controlled by the state worrying times. I'm not suggesting that all CBDCs will be like that, um, but I think as citizens, we should really be paying attention to what the governments are doing. Uh, but not only that, we should be, I guess, um, not standing for any, you know, things that could really, you know, just make us, you know, in, into even more of a slave society than than we're already in, right? You know, I kind of feel that, most people work in a nine to five. They don't tend to like their jobs. It is just uh, a modern slavery system. And, um, you know, the the threat that CBDCs pose, um, you know, would strengthen that and make it far worse, in my opinion. Uh, we've got Bitcoin ETFs resume inflows winning streak. BlackRock's iBit crosses 20 billion AUM after a period of flat and uh, negative flows. So again, just that table is starting to turn. I think a lot of this is because of the US um, becoming more and more positive. And that's what uh, Fidelity are, are saying here. Uh, most investors have uh, some Bitcoin uh, allocation. And, um, you know, investors aren't really, um, I guess, paying that much attention to the the U-turn the U.S. are doing, if you kind of think about like the, the Senate and stuff, um, they are becoming more and more pro-crypto, even though Biden is looking to, to potentially veto the uh, new bill that was proposed. So, yeah, look, we've got to be, I guess, monitoring this sort of stuff. It is really interesting. And uh, for me, like there's so many signs in the market that can kind of tell you where we're heading. You know, we we see the the, the Bitcoin spot ETF, you know, uh, likely approval before it happened. And, you know, we started to, you know, widen that scope to talk about the ETH um, spot ETF possibility and then, you know, rolling into other altcoins. So, 
you know, always trying to to think ahead in this market. It's really important to, you know, not just look at the, you know, the blockchain space and crypto. Uh, you've got to look out at some of the other financial markets as well. Um, and that's something that I think we we should do here, right? We've got US bank sector, um, I guess, is in a lot of trouble. And this is something that, again, you guessed it. I've been talking about for about 12 months, predicting that we're going to get some really bad issues around banks in the uh, US. Um, look, we've made some really bold predictions, right? And uh, I think we've just got one that's outstanding, which is the Fed pivot crash. And uh, we're really waiting for something to break for that to actually happen. And this gives you, I, I guess, the the idea of what I've been talking about, right? Um 517 billion dollars unrealized losses 63 troubled institutional uh flagged or institutions flagged so banks so 63 banks on i guess the the brink of collapse in the u.s right and uh this has i guess the potential to bring the the fed pivot um and the money printers to to come on now don't get excited by that because you normally get a crash when the Fed uh, pivots, right? You get a crash. Um, the crash is actually, it's 100% accuracy, right? Whenever there's a, a Fed pivot, 100% of the time there's a, a crash. Now, if you go back to like the, the 1970s, I think it was, you know, the crashes um, and the time that you you were down, you know, in, in that hardship, I guess, um, was quite a length of time. And as time has you know progressed, as we've gone through the years, each and every uh, Fed pivot crash has actually got shorter and shorter. So it could be something like a, a flash crash. It could be you know a crash that lasts a, a few months, uh, and then we we go on into to really bullish times for risk assets. So this is something that I predicted uh, well over twelve months ago. Uh, I, I had uh, Q three. Uh, 24 as the um, months uh, or the quarter, I should say, that was uh, predicted for this. But, you know, it's an election year and, um, you know, what happens with the elections could dictate whether that gets pushed back or not. As much as the Fed are saying they're not paying attention to the elections and stuff like that, it is nonsense. They are, um, you know, you kind of think who they kind of report into. Um, so we've got Dubai financial regulator updates crypto token rules for funds. Again, real positive, um, you know, update from Dubai. I, I highlight this because again, it just demonstrates the, um, I guess, the improvement of uh, regulations, improvement of acceptance of, of blockchain technology and crypto. Uh, as a business, um, the fees and stuff are going to be coming down. Again, it's just really, really positive news uh, for the crypto space. We've got Bitwise CIO says market undervaluing Washington's shift attitude towards crypto. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Um, people aren't recognizing um, what this actually means, right? That a lot of people in the US own crypto. A lot of people in the US uh, are going to start to have you know, more positive uh, regulations and, and so on with uh, crypto. So I think we're coming to the end of the uh, Gary Gensler era of uh, negativity towards crypto. And I think things are going to start to get more and more positive moving into 2025. So it's going to be an interesting couple of years, I believe. And then, uh, again, a really big um, you know, deal going on at the moment. And I say deal like it's... I've been having debates with people on um, on spaces around consolidation and the consolidation phases in crypto. And uh, in, in all honesty, there isn't any consolidation. There's still loads of new projects launching. The, the best project since sliced bread um, that goes on to be like the next Amazon, uh, the next Microsoft, might not even exist yet, might not actually be live yet. They, they might just be still developing it and it's not live. We don't know right now. Um, but the only consolidation that is happening is in the AI space. Uh, this is with Fetch, this is with AGIX and uh, Singularity Net, that is, and Ocean. Um, so look, these three uh, projects are merging into one. That happens in around seven days time. Well, it's actually six days now. I think it's like the 13th. 
So yeah, look, it's going to be uh, really interesting to to see how it goes. Yeah, it says the announced for the 11th of June. It's really going to be the 13th. If your crypto tokens are on exchanges, um, I'm going to um, put my um, my thoughts out there that I believe that most exchanges are going to just merge these tokens for you. If they're not on an exchange, you are going to have to go to the Singularity um, bridge and then bridge the tokens that you've got into the new uh, ASI token. So just wanted to cover that off, let everybody know what's going on with that. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, tap in that bell, selecting all the notifications so you never miss a video and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.